Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I want to show you the App Search API from Google, because that is an on-device search library which we can use to implement a very efficient and performant search. So if you just have a very large data set in your app, for example, which you also save persistently, so in a database, and you then need search functionality and filtering behavior, with that list, with that large data set, then most people just use something like a room, but that's not fully efficient. So if your app relies on this efficiency, it makes a lot of sense to look into app search. And in this video, I will show you how we can implement this app search functionality here in our app so that we have our generic to-do list where we can filter very efficiently. So to-do 100, for example, then we see all the to-do 100s, but it also works if we just say description 100, that we see description 100. So it's a full search functionality, which you don't need to implement on your own, which is really efficient with a proper database indexing. And everything here is saved locally in a database. Okay, I am here in an empty Android Studio Jetpack Compose project, except for the build.gradle setup. So that is something I would ask you to please uh, copy paste from my GitHub repository. So these are the three dependencies we need. On the one hand, in the app search dependency, the app search compiler, which comes with a little bit of code generation and the app search local storage dependency. Because there are two different types of app search. On the one hand, we have local storage and platform storage. Local storage is really for data that is local to our app, that is private to our app. Platform storage, on the other hand, is used if you want to have a central pool of data where multiple apps can actually access that data. For example, I don't know, a contact list app where you just want to have a central pool of contacts on your device and all different contact list apps can then access that pool. In this video, I will focus on local storage though, since this is probably what you usually need. I also updated the Kotlin Compose compiler extension version to 1.5.7. JVM target 17, and I've added capped, so Kotlin annotation processing. Um, KSP kind of supports um, the app search compiler, but I ran into some issues with that. Um, so it's not super stable, it seems. That is why I'm using capped, which is the slower variant of annotation processing, but that's fine here. Last but not least, I also updated the Kotlin version to 1.9.21. That is everything I wanted to show you, uh, what you need as prerequisites. You find the code down below. Um, let's dive into it. And the first thing we want to define is our actual database model. So the actual to-do list item that we want to save in our database table. Because you will notice that this works quite different than Room, since this type of database, which is not SQLite, is really optimized for searching. So there are a lot of um, database indexes that are being used, which make the search performant and uh, the querying that data in general. If you don't rely on such an efficient search, then please use Room, that is more convenient in my opinion. Um, but if you do, then App Search really makes this pretty simple. So in our root package, you wanna create a class called to-do, that is a data class. And just like Room, here we also want to work with a lot of annotations. On the one hand, Want to annotate this class with a document, which is pretty much um, what a table represents in App Search in the App Search database. Here we need to specify something called a namespace, which is a string. Um, so you can imagine the namespace as something like a, a category for a set of to-do items. So we annotate this with a namespace, for example. I don't know, you can assign very uh, custom namespaces here, for example, for user one and user two, if you have multiple users for an app, um, and then that namespace can allow you to just search for a specific user. So all the other user entries are being ignored if you just search for user one and not for user two, for example. And then just like for room or for normal SQL databases, we wanna have an ID from app search, which can be a string here. So just ID string. We can have an optional score, which um, provides an additional kind of metric that decides about how important this document is and how how much it should be prioritized when searching for it, so at, so at which position it will show up. This is optional, but we can add this here with the score annotation. And everything that comes next will be the fields of our actual to-do item. So what does a to-do item consist of? Well, on the one hand, a title, a text, so the, the description, and a Boolean, whether it's uh, done or not. So we have a title which is a string, we have a text, which is a string, and we have a boolean is done. But that's not enough. We also need to annotate these fields if we want to consider them in our search. For strings, we need to annotate them with a string property. And here we also need to 
pass an indexing type because App Search will now use these fields and consider these for our search functionality because as you just saw, um, this search really links all of our text fields or our strings in our to-do items. So we can search for both description 100 or to-do 100 and that will both give us the same results. And the indexing type can now be App Search Schema String property config, indexing type prefixes. So with this indexing type, we can uh, decide how these, um, how, how this field is basically indexed. So if we want to consider it by just its prefixes. So if we already want to include it to do, if we just type to, for example, or if that's not enough and we only want to include it to do, if we actually type to do exactly. So type the, the whole title exactly in our search bar. That is something we can decide here. Um, I would like to have indexing type prefixes, which is usually what you want for a search. We can also have the same for our text. And it gives us some kind of error here. Did I use the wrong import? Yes, uh, I did. So you can see all of this is Android X, but this one isn't. So let's remove this again and import the right one here from Android X. And then we don't have any error. For the is done boolean, we also want to annotate this with a boolean property in this case, um, but here we don't really need to configure anything. That is really just to mark it as a boolean for the App Search framework. Okay, what is next? Next up, we're going to create a little class called to do search manager, which really just manages um, saving to dos and searching for dos and just uh, handling the database session, which we can use to just do exactly that to query our database, in insert new items, update items, all that stuff. We want to pass the application context here. So private val app context, which is a context. And in here, we now want to keep track of our so-called app search session. That is really what we use to connect to our database and then manage that active session to insert new items, update items, and so on. Let's just call this session, by the way, and make that an app search session nullable. And initially, that's null because Initially, we aren't connected to our database. We can change that, though, with the following function. I would like to use coroutines here. Um, generally, the uh, App Search API, the App Search library, works a lot with the so-called futures, which is an yeah, kind of asynchronous framework or to handle asynchronous calls. I like Kotlin coroutines and flows, so um, I just convert these futures into suspend functions here, so we can use these conveniently with view model scope and what not. So let's just have an init function here, which initializes our session. That is the function we always need to call before using our database, we before inserting items and so on. And in here, we're going to use a with context block to make sure we execute this initialization on our IO dispatcher, since yeah, connecting to a database is of course an IO thing. And then we can get our session future with a local storage dot create search session async. That is how we create the session. We pass the search context, which you can create with local storage dot search context dot builder. And in here, we need to pass our application context and the database name. So this is really just like creating a room database, which we call to do and then call dot build. So now we have a session future, which itself does not block the underlying threat. So it will resume with this uh, thread here almost immediately until we call session future dot get. So this is really, really the, the blocking call, which we execute here in a with context block. So we don't block the main thread accidentally or so. Um, so that way we can just effectively convert these futures into coroutines. But before we do that, we don't want to have a set schema request. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set the database schema. So how our database actually looks like, how everything is wired together. And we can create that with set schema request that builder. And here we need to add our document classes. So you can see there is a lot of configuration you can pass, like if you have a migration logic or so, but we just want to add some document classes, which are the tables that our database consists of. So in this case, we have to do double colon class of Java, and that's already it. If you have more tables, you of course need to add them all here in the set schema request. Then we can say, session is equal to session future dot get you can see that returns this app search session and again yeah that is not a, the, the blocking call which will actually establish that connection which will take a little moment and after that we can then use this session that was returned and set the schema of it 
to our set schema request. Okay, that is how we create our database with App Search. Next up, we would like to learn how we can insert new to-do items because that is, of course, something we would need to do here. We are not going to build a fully fledged CRUD to-do app, but rather just uh, add some sample to-dos uh, so that we can really focus on the search functionality of this. But for that, I will also add some functions here, or rather just one function to put to-dos. So we can pass a list of to-dos. And this function is going to insert these into our database. We can also make that return a Boolean, whether that insertion was a success or not. And we can then return our with context block again. Dispatches IO, that's nothing new. And in here, we're going to use our session, which has to be established at this point. Otherwise, it will crash or it will rather not do anything since the session will be now. So session dot put async. Um, I think it's quite confusing that it's called put because put is usually I'm considered an update operation, at least uh, in regards to networking. But here put really means we insert a document into our database. And I assume you can also define some uh, some form of absurd behavior with that. Uh, so if the document already exists with the ID you're trying to insert, it will update it instead. Not sure what the default here is for app search, um, but putting will definitely also insert a new document if the ID doesn't exist yet. And in here, what app search wants from us is a put documents request dot builder. Um, I don't think it needs any parameters. And in here, what we need is add documents because this function can be used to now add specific documents to our session, to our database. And we can pass these here, so our to-do items, since all of these are documents as we annotated them. And then call that build. That again is now an async function as the name says. So it returns a listenable future, which itself just executes a request, but uh, it's, it's completely asynchronous. So this doesn't block our with context block yet until we call that get again. So that will return an app search batch result. And then we can call is success and check if that's true. So with that, we just insert all of our entries. We wait for the result and then we check if it was successful. If it is, we return true in this function and otherwise not. So now that we're able to put some new to-dos into our database, we want to learn how we can search for these documents because that is really what this tutorial is about. So let's go down here and create that function. So span function search to-dos. For that, we of course need a search query, which is the string we type in our search bar. And that should now return our list of to-dos, which is the search result. Then we can again return with context this patches IO. And in here, we now need to execute that search query. First of all, we need some search configuration, which we can do with a so-called search spec, search spec builder. And here we can really configure a lot how we, how we want that search to behave. Most importantly, I would like to set a snippet count. So how many entries we would like to uh, contain in this search result at max. Let's say we only care about the first 10 to-dos that match our search query. But you would also very well implement some kind of pagination logic here with App Search. Um, that just gets a little bit more complex in that case. Then we want to add a filter namespaces. Um, so what, that, what does that mean? Here we can really filter for specific namespaces. And um, that is what I've mentioned with the example where we might have an app that has two different users where each user has their own set of to-do items. Then we could assign a, a namespace for each user, so user one and user two. And then in this function, we could say, we only want to search for the to-dos from user one. So we could say user one here, for example. Well, in this case, we're not going to have multiple users. I'll just say the namespace is my to-dos, and that is also what I will then later assign to the sample to-do items we're going to create here. And something very interesting is the ranking strategy. The ranking strategy is an additional strategy that uh, is kind of a secondary search criteria. So it will kind of first find all elements or items that match our search query, but then order these based on a specific strategy. And here App Search really gives you a lot of different options, which you would need a lot of time to implement with room of a lot of complexity uh, that you would have an addition in your room database. And in App Search, that is already contained by default. So for example, ranking strategy dot, um, oops, what is it? Not sure how I get that. Let's import one that I definitely know. Um, ranking strategy advanced ranking expression. No, I want ranking strategy for example, system usage count, 
Um, let's actually use search spec dot ranking strategy usage count. That one is actually the one that I want. But depending on the strategy, you now get a different ordering of the end result. If we use uh, usage count, then App Search will keep track of uh, when these items were used. So for example, if we toggle our is done booling here for this to do, and then search for that again, then you will see it actually pops up on top because we we last used this item and we changed it in our database. But there are also different strategies, as you can see. Um, so creation timestamp, and then it will be ordered depending on when these items were created. You have a document score. Um, that is what we've assigned here in the to-do item. So you can assign your custom score, your, your custom ordering logic for a to-do item. So you maybe ha have an algorithm that decides how important a to-do is. Maybe you make it based on how long the text and description is. I don't know. Um, then you can assign a custom score to it and consider this with this ranking strategy. You have a relevant score. I'm not sure how that works internally, but some kind of relevant score uh, will be there that App Search assigns to your list, to your documents. But let's just keep this at usage count because I think uh, there's a pretty cool functionality that we get out of the box here. And then we can call that build for our search spec. And now with this search spec, we can execute our search. That function will give us a result, that search result. So with all the entries contained in that search, mm, we can execute that with session.search, pass in the query for the query expression and the search spec for this one. If that search is null, which should never happen here because we shouldn't call this search to this function if our session isn't initialized, but um, that's uh, our code can't know that here. So then we would just return an empty list, add with context right here. But then if everything was successful, we can get the first page of our search result. So as I said, you can use App Search with pagination. And the way this works is this result gives you the next page async, which you can then simply iterate over. In this case, we only care about a single page. So we just call get and then loop over the entries of that page. So page dot map, not null actually. So we loop over every single entry of that page, which is in form of a search result, as you can see. And then we can check if it, so the search result, that a generic document dot schema type is actually equal to to do double colon class dot Java dot simple name. So that will actually be the case that our schema type here will be equal to to do if we're dealing with a to do element. Of course, if you have a search query that might, that might contain multiple different types of documents, you need some form of a check in order to properly cast this to or to do class here. But then we can pretty much just say it dot get document. And we pass our to do double colon class at Java. And otherwise, if we're not dealing with a to-do item, then something went wrong here, then we just want to return null and ignore this element in our end result since we use map not null. You can see the error went away since we now have a fully functioning uh, search to-dos function. The last thing we now need in our to-do search manager is a function to close the session. So when we're done using that database, we can use um, just a normal function close session, where we call session at close, and we reset it to null. And before we can now use this in our activity, I would like to have a little view model so we also keep our state. Let's go to our root package, create that main view model, make it a class, make it inherit from view model. And in here, what do we need? We need our to-do search manager, of course, since we're going to use that in our view model. Then we want some form of state that represents our UI state. What do we need for that? On the one hand, we need a text that reflects the currently typed search query. And we need the list of to-do items that we now search for. Let's bundle that in a little data class. So new class here in our root package called to-do list state or so. Make that a data class. And in here, we're going to have our to-dos, which is just a list of to-do elements set that to an empty list, and we're going to have a search query, which is just an empty string by default. Then in our main view model, we can have our var state by mutable state off, and that will initially be an empty to-do list state. We can now hit Alt-Enter to import these extensions, and we make that a private set because the UI should not be able to directly mutate this state 
that should only be the responsibility of the view model. And with private set, we achieve exactly that, that the UI can read this property, but not write to it. Okay, then something we would like to do in the view models init is we want to pre-populate our database. So we just want to pass some code that inserts maybe 100 to-do items into our database just once. After that, we can remove the code. And we, of course, want to also connect to our database. So let's open a view model scope or launch a view model scope coroutine call to do search manager dot init. So that is something you now always need to do before using uh, that app search database connection. And after that, we can use that whoops, <laughs> to do search manager dot put to do's function with a list of to do items you would like to insert. Let's just create a, a list of random to do's like this. So we have, let's say 100 to do items. So we take the indices from one to 100 and we map these to a to-do item. Then for the namespace, we choose my underscores, uh, underscore to-dos. That is exactly what we also chose here, that we only want to search within that namespace. So if we would now also have a to-do with a different namespace, then this would not be included in our search by default unless you modify the search function in our manager. Then we have an ID which we can just generate with UUID, that random UUID, that two string. We have a score, which I would just pass one for here. So that was really just a demo that you can uh, use a custom score that affects the ordering of your search items. We can have a title that is to do dollar it. So to do one, to do two, and so on. And we're going to have a text of the description, which is description it. And for the is done boolean, we can just generate a random boolean. So random that next boolean. Oh, that was the wrong random, I think. Random dot next boolean from Kotlin. We can then take this list, pass it in here, put to do's to do's. Then we can have some functions in our view model that we would like to trigger from our UI on the one hand to search. And when we actually uh, change the search text or also when we change the is done boolean for a to-do item. So on the one hand, on search query change with the new query. So when we type something in our text field, that function will be triggered. Here we want to just update our state. So we say state is stated copy. We just uh, take the state as it is, but we change the search query field to the new query. And then to execute that search, we can execute a, or launch a coroutine and view model scope where we want to use our search manager and call search to do's with uh, that new query. That will then return the to do's, um, so the, the filter to do's based on the search query, which we can then use to update our state. So here we can then pass these to do's to our state so uh, the new list will also be reflected in our list. Something we should do here is to also cancel the old job. So that it can be that we run into some kind of race conditions because um, you could maybe type a character here. This would execute the search to do's function. If you then type another character, this would also execute search to do's in a separate function. And if the second function finishes before the first one, then it might be that you get inconsistent results. So we want to keep track of the job, private var search job, which is a nullable job set to null. And we can then say search job is equal to this job that we launched here in view model scope. And just before we make sure that we cancel the old job. So we know that there is definitely only one job running at a time. If you want, you could also add a debounce effect here. Um, so that means that you first let the user type a little bit and only execute this search if the user did not type something for let's say 500 milliseconds. So you don't have this database call after every keystroke, but rather after the user finished typing for at least 500 milliseconds. You could do this by just adding a delay right here, for example, 500 milliseconds, and then your code would always wait 500 milliseconds until the user um, stopped or when the user stopped typing. Then what else do we need? As I said, we would like to be able to toggle to do's. So we have a function called on done change for specific to do. And we pass the new done state. So whether it's now done or not. And then here we also on one hand want to update that item in the database, but also in our local state. So we have a view model scope coroutine again, where we say search manager dot put to do's. And here we want to take our to-do as it is with the ID that we already have, and we update it 
with um, is done being equal to whatever we passed here. Since this function only accepts a list in this case, let's just create an, a list with one item where we pass our to do dot copy. So we keep all entries the same, just the is done boolean is being set to the new boolean. After that, we can also make that reflect in our local state. So state is state.copy. And to do's is state.todos.map. Since we're using an, an immutable list here, we can't simply um, find the element and change is done since that's not in var. So instead we create a completely new list with this map function. We try to find the to do that we are looking for by checking if the ID of the currently um, looped over to do is actually the same as the to do ID we passed here. If that's the same, then we found a do, the to do that we would like to update. So we can say, okay, that is equal to it.copy is done is is done and else we just leave it at it. So we ignore all to do's except for the single one that we would like to change. And for that, we only change the is done boolean. I hope that makes sense. Then for this remodel, we're almost already done. The only thing we should add is that we should also close our session when the remodel is not being used anymore. And we can easily do this by overriding on cleared, where we just say, okay, to do search manager dot close session. So when the view model is uh, not, or is, when the view model is destroyed, for example, if we leave the screen, if we pop it from the back stack, then uh, we also close the session. Of course, that's only relevant if you don't need this uh, session across your app, but only on that particular screen. But now the last thing that's missing is of course only our UI. That should be pretty simple. Let's go inside of main activity and first of all, create our view model reference. So private val view model, is a main view model by view models like this. And for this view model, we also need to pass a view model factory um, since we're not using any dependency injection library here. So that does that for us. Just to keep things simple, let's add our own factory um, because our view model needs constructor arguments. And in that case, we just need to provide such a factory producer. So here, a lambda function opening, and we make that an object of type um, view model provider that factory open this block of code again hit command o to actually override this model class or this create model class function and here we can then return an instance of our main view model with its constructor arguments so in this case that the, the uh, to do search manager which you can create here with our application context and we cast that as t okay now that view model is ready to be used so let's go inside of our set content block here and Credit column first of all, which we make, um, which we make fill the whole width, so or actually the whole size of our screen. And then this column will, on the one hand, contain our search bar. So we can also take a look here. So this search bar, and then it will contain an inner lazy column for all these search elements, um, the to-do items particularly. So first of all, text field where the value is view model dot state dot search query we can actually have the state as a separate field here to type a little bit less so view model that state and we then get rid of view model oops okay then for the on value change function we can just trigger our view model on search query change so when the text changes we definitely want to directly execute our search with our debounce functionality and we add a little modifier fill max with and some padding before. Let's say padding of ATP. And Art Studio also wants us to add this experimental annotation here. So I'll enter and add that to main activity to get rid of this error. But below this text field, we can then create our lazy column for our to-do items. Assign a modifier, modifier fill max with in this case, and give that a weight of 1F to make this lazy column fill the remaining height of our column. We can also give it some padding, some content padding actually, set that to padding values of ATP. So we just give it the same padding as our text field. And then in here, we can have an items block, choose this items overload that takes in a, a list of items here. So we can pass our state that to do's here and get a reference to each to do, which you can now draw in our screen here. I would like to make that a to-do item composable where we pass the to-do item here. Oops. And we also have an on 
than change lambda, which allows us to react to changes when we basically tap the checkbox. So this could give us the is done boolean where we save your model on done change for the to do with the new is done boolean. We can then go to our to do item, hit alt enter to create this function to do item. Down here, that works. Um, so the on done change parameter is actually a boolean and this should be a composable function. Also format these arguments a little bit. Um, oh, actually, no, this is not a boolean. This is, of course, a lambda that provides a boolean. And we could also pass in a modifier here that is optional, which we don't need. But let's see how such a to-do item actually looks like. So we have our title a little bit bigger and our description in a little bit smaller font. And then at the end, we have our checkbox. So overall, we have a row as the outer container. And in that row, we have two elements. On the one hand, a column with these two texts and a checkbox. So let's create that row, which we assign our modifier to, that fill max width, and we give it some padding of 8 dp again. Then inside that row, we're going to create our column, um, give that a weight of 1f, modifier weight 1f, so that will just achieve that this row where we put in these texts will fill all the space it can get except for the space the checkbox needs. And then in here, we can create these two texts on the one hand for the to-do title, which we give a font size of, let's say, uh, 14 or 16 SP. I'll enter to import SP and another text that is for the um, to-do items description, so the text. Here we can give this a font size of 10 SP. Okay, that is for the column. Last but not least, we need the checkbox. The check boolean depends on whether the to-do is checked or is done. And the on check change lambda here can just be our on done change. And I think that should be everything we need. So we now have our UI, we are able to trigger the done changes and we are able to trigger our search. Let's just execute this and see if we are missing something. So there we go. We have an empty text field and nothing is shown, of course, because we haven't searched yet. But let's enter something like two. And yes, we do get all of our to-do items where the random is done states. If we search for to-do 100, then it gives us exactly that single to-do that is called to-do 100. If we enter to-do 10, then it gives us to do 110, since uh, both these include our texts. And if we now toggle the to do and change that state, and then just search for the same thing again, then you can see it pops up at the very top of our list, since we have this ranking strategy based on the usage count. And this to do was just the one that we uh, used the most recently. So App Search will rank that uh, accordingly. So this was, of course, a rather basic example of how you can use App Search to search for database entries. Of course, you can get, get much more in depth with that to add pagination, to add uh, advanced ranking strategies, to add multiple tables, to also join these with queries. All that is possible with App Search. It's really just a documentation that isn't really extensive, I think. So it would be, it was a little bit hard to um, find out about these more advanced things. But I think especially with the functionality it provides, and if you're already familiar with a room database, then you can figure this out. Use ChatGPT, that usually helps a lot. But I think for most people's use, that is already uh, fine and enough what I showed you here. If you enjoy these Android tutorials and courses, then you will definitely also enjoy my much more advanced Android courses, which you can all find by clicking on the first link in this video's description. So depending on whether you want to learn testing, CICD, multi-module architecture, KMP, or whatever it is, you will find an appropriate course down below. Click that link, check it out. That is, of course, also a brilliant way to support the future of this channel. I'm very grateful for anyone who gets my advanced courses and for anyone who watched this video till the end. Thanks so much. I wish you an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.